I wonder if I should... Um, you can actually destroy air bases. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of bombs to do it. You get an absolute butt ton of XP for doing this, by the way. But it's just a question of whether. And, and if you look, you'll see the damage done. Look at the airfield indicator, and you'll see it starts turning white as damage gets done to the airstrip. There you go, and you can see how many bombs I'm going to need to drop. Bombs away. The team are doing all right. We've done. So oh, we are actually doing some substantial damage to that airfield. Howdy folks and welcome back to War Thunder with the Mighty Jingles. Today we have a realistic battle for you in the new American ground attack aircraft, the Douglas Sky Raider. I'm a big fan of the Douglas Sky Raider. Haven't played it in War Thunder yet, but it was an amazing aircraft in real life. The Sky Raider is being flown for us today by Napalm Priest. He's a German player and it's quite appropriate actually the name Napalm Priest because one thing that the Sky Raider excelled at was delivering ordnance on ground targets like nothing else in the US Navy's arsenal. Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. So it's now 6 years ago since I registered my account on the 23rd of March 2013, so again 6 years ago, and this is then where six years later I have to ask the question, what happened to my life? <laughs> where did all this time go? So, you know, relax, sit back, get a beer, get some popcorn, get both if you will, I don't care, I don't know. Who cares at all? Just relax, um, strap yourself in for a little bit of a story time. So the first video clip was the very first video that I can remember watching from Jingles and that was titled Trolling in the Catalina. It was released on the 10th of January 2013 but I only watched it on March or somewhere in March of 2013. Many more videos followed and then again as I said I registered uh, on the 23rd of March 2013 an account at uh, War Thunder and began to play. So yeah I have to thank Chingles for ruining my life kind of <laughs> and I have to say that I don't really regret it this game is awesome um, but before I began my YouTube career let me just uh, go in a chronological order through the events that happened. So I watched Chingles video in the Catalina then yeah i watched some more videos from other youtubers amongst them uh fly daily when it comes to war thunder um obviously some other people i also watched like squire i always wondered who was that funny guy in those corporation videos with that funny british accent so he was really outstanding with the voice and then yeah there was immediately in 2013 the first april fools um f the april fools event and that was just amazing. The Pony Nation, the very first true Sixth Nation, not the Italians, no, 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 no. Uh, it was the Pony Nation. That raises the question, Gaijin, when Pony Tanks and Pony Ships were, when, why not now? So that was also amazing. Then obviously we saw some further April Fools events. So in 2014, Gaijilla, where there was only the Death Server, sadly. And in 2015, the double event with the unrealistic battle tanks. Who doesn't love the premium APCR carrots <laughs> and the inflatable tanks? And especially the March to Victory, the walkers, you know, the KV-2 on legs where you, can, where you could climb on houses. It was amazing and just walk through um, also the river that goes through the map Eastern Europe. It was amazing. Then... Something amazing happened in 2015 because I had the battle that you could see in the background in the 82 Sky Raider and Chingles featured it. I couldn't believe my luck that he actually stumbled across the 82 Sky Raider video of mine or the replay and made the video in the past. Um, before I continue to talk, um, a long time ago Chingle mentioned in one of his 
mingles with jingles that anybody can use without asking for permission or asking for further permission uh, if one could use footage from his YouTube channel. So the links to his YouTube channel to the two mentioned videos you will find in the video description down below. And I think this is still um, the status that everybody can use his footage. Um, so first of all, thank you Chingles for that. And if that has changed because I tried to contact the man, uh, which is very difficult. Um, I tried it on Discord with people that um, have contact to him. And I'm sorry that I had to bother, um, that I had to waste their times, but they also couldn't make contact to the man. So as far as I am aware, this is still the status that um, everything is in. So this was in 2015. More than 120,000 people have watched this video and I was very, very proud of it. Um, if you want to watch the original, you can, again, link in the video description down below. Then 2016, probably one of my personal favorite April Fool's events. That was the sailing fleet, the pirate ships, you know, the, the, the Kraken when you went to the map border. It was much fun. It looked awesome sadly i don't have the screenshots here and the recordings i had to delete because of the lack of space on my hard drives back then <clears throat> very annoyed with that but it was fun it was amazing and it was kind of the test bed for the water naval part years later um so yeah that was in 2016 then a few weeks later, on the 22nd of April 2016, I released my own personal first video. Uh, it was a test video without commentary, probably for the better, uh, in the T44-100 average gameplay. And so, yeah, that was my first video. So it is six years of me playing War Thunder. It is now nearly four years of the 82 Sky Raider video by... Uh, jingles and it is obviously also then approaching i say approaching uh three years of me making war thunder youtube content 99 percent of my videos are about uh, war thunder uh, in the future i might include some more fishing videos and uh, maybe at times i might remember world of warships because i also have a well i'd say decent account on it yeah so then let's continue with the April Fool's uh, events. So then 2017, we had the rank 9 with the T80 and the Leopard 2A5. Now look where we are right now. <laughs> then 2018, it was very disappointing with the Silent Thunder. That was really boring in my opinion. And 2019, I don't want to know. I don't want to know because I want to be surprised. I don't speculate about this thing. It is the first April, April Fool's event. I want to enjoy it. And that is how I see it. Um, please don't ping me with the latest news about it. I want to be surprised. Okay, This is one of the few things in War Thunder that I really still care about. Uh, and I'm really excited about. So... Um, then that was kind of the chronological orders of things in the last six years. Since then, over 18,500 people of you have chosen to give me a subscription. Thank you guys for that. Thank you for your content. I mean, I could have clickbait more. I could have made some more hype videos, could have gone for even more subscribers and more video views. I'm one of the few guys that still covers Naval um, RB at all. And I think I don't want to go into a rant video. Let's talk about the awesome things that happened to War Thunder from a technological perspective. What a long way we have come. We started with only aircraft with five nations and uh, many things were different back in the days. So I think we have come a long way where now we have some supersonic jets, we have air-to-air -air missiles, we have modern tanks with composite armor and stabilizers and APFSTS and uh, how I also despise the high tier meta. That's not really the fault of uh, the tanks themselves and the technology behind them is just that way. So what I want to say is, we started with World War II tanks. Um, the IS-4 and the Tiger 105 were the uh, highest tanks for the Soviets and the Germans respectively, if I can recall it correctly. And since then, we have come 
a very, very long way. From five nations to seven, from only aircraft to aircraft, helicopters, tanks and ships with more stuff to come. Maybe in the future even more nations in a few years time. I hope for the best. War Thunder is an amazing game. We saw the rework of the sky. We saw the rework of many maps. We saw the rework also of water, which looks stunning. Uh, several engine sound and overall sound uh, changes. Graphical improvements. Rework of vehicles. There is a lot of good in War Thunder. There is a lot of an amazing uh, work put into it. A lot of effort. And I think the game can do even more. Um, it is always my kind of um, point of rant that some basic stuff is just missing. When a cruiser, half the guns just misfire or the gun barrels don't elevate. Um, or Gaijin seems to not know their own statistics about... Yeah, let's say the reload rate of a cruiser compared to other cruisers on the dev block. Those are very annoying things. And um, yeah, still, I love to play the game. I love the game. I rant because I care about the game. If I would just be a casual player, I would just feature, you know, the very best gameplay. Say, oh my god, that was so great. You know, and also play other games. But no, I nearly exclusively only play War Thunder and that for six years. I wouldn't do this if the game wouldn't be amazing. And uh, at this point, I have to thank some people. So again, beginning with Jingles, who obviously started the whole damn thing. <laughs> I have to just go through uh, down the line. Uh, surprisingly as well, I have to thank Quickie Baby for being such a good inspiration in terms of tank reviews and also pushing out the quality content that he does, even though he just briefly covered War Thunder tanks. Um, I still think that he is an inspiration for me and specifically was in the past with the tank RP um, or the tank review stuff rather. And as well, Fly Daily out of all the people, uh, which is now a, a channel with over 600,000 subscribers. He has also come a long way. And yeah, he also, when Jingles didn't make a War Thunder video, that was always Fly Daily that made a War Thunder video. Um, then down the line, obviously, there was the Gentleman's Hangout that started all with Squire. Um, at some point asking for assistance for making a video. Then I went to the TeamSpeak 3 with the with the Gentleman's Hangar where I met many people. Um, I met the Orange Doom. I met the Iron Median. I met Mike Goes Boom and Max TV. And uh, yeah, they also since then know me for their misery, I guess. <laughs> but honestly, also down the lines, I met uh, many miles away and some many more people I have uh, since then contact to, for example, on a sporadic basis, Implead and Dieter and Jenga and many more. With Jenga for years, I now try to make a cooperation, but then he doesn't have time and something has interrupted his plans. And then my internet starts to fall apart and I have then on a surprising short notice, no time, etc, etc. So uh, yeah, that is now the current state of uh, how it is. I want to continue to um, feature War Thunder. I think the game is amazing. The game has an, a massive amount of potential. And I hope that Gaijin just simply fixes the game and that Gaijin brings it to a status where it is as amazing as, as it can be. And we have all the ingredients there. Uh, yeah, I think enough has said about this in the past. And I think... Yeah, that is now me playing six years of War Thunder. Uh, my English has drastically improved, although it's still shit. <laughs> um, I think um, I still have um, improved quite a bit. Um, I have learned the art of making videos or, you know, what you can call videos. And so, yeah, many, many things have uh, since then happened. And then now let's go back to the original commentary. In the landing gear, he's... he's it almost not quite just manages to get the landing gear down in time as he puts this thing down on the ground. But watch, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you see that ram attempt? That was some spectacular flying from the HE-162 pilot. He missed the ground by inches, but it was a complete waste of time. You cannot ram an aircraft 
when it's on the ground. It just does not work in War Thunder. As you quite clearly saw, he flew right through him. So now, well, all the HE-162 can do is loiter in the sky above the airstrip and try to repeat the procedure when Napalm Priest has loaded and gets this thing back into the air. But while Napalm Priest is doing his rearm and reload, the HE-162 crashes. <laughs> You can see him burning over there in the distance. Not sure why. Um, possibly, well, it must have been due to overall damage sustained while he was getting shot at by Flak and various other aircraft. But now, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. And Napalm Priest doesn't know what he's up against. He knows that there's one other pilot left on the enemy team. We can see, because it's a replay, that it's a guy in a jet Horton 229. Napalm Priest has no idea. He's changed his loadout before he took off. He's still got the rockets, but he's lost the 1,000-pound bombs. And instead of the ground target ammunition for his 20mm cannons, he's gone for a more suitable um, ammunition load. With uh, the ground target ammunition, you have two armor piercing for every high-explosive fragmentation round. So he's got more high-explosive frag ammo and less of the armor piercing. But he doesn't know where the Horton 229 is. So, well... It is a ground attack mission after all, and you are in a Douglas Sky Raider, so let's blow some shit up. And those medium tanks are looking like a pretty inviting target for your rockets. Plenty of them. Shame to put them to waste. Yep, he's going for the medium tanks. Let's see how he does. Damn, son, that was some fancy shooting. <laughs> Not bad at all. All right. Well, um, if the Horton 229 pilot is paying attention to his map and the combat messages, he is going to know more or less where to look for Napalm Priest. And uh, is that? There he is. Yep, he's coming in. He dodges the return fire, pulls it round. Whoa, that was close. And that's, well, that, that, this is the point at which Napalm Priest realises that he is in fact up against another jet and uh, you know what, it doesn't rattle him watch this the Horton's gone into a climb, he's going to gain more altitude to reverse, come back and dive on him again and Napalm Priest is casually still shooting up ground targets <laughs> he just doesn't care <laughs> and he's done it he's taken out another bunker now where did the Horton 229 go is he, he's not going to do it again no surely not He's being quite casual about the fact that there's, uh, <laughs> that there's a jet fighter bomber setting up for a dive on him here. Where has he gone? Oh, I can't see him, but he's obviously seen him. He's pulling it into a hard turn. He's throwing it all over the sky. There he is. Here he comes. And I think he's managed to make him overshoot. This is tense. <laughs> this is it. Sudden death. There's only two of them left. I doubt this one's going to end in a draw somehow. One of them's going to die. Who's it going to be? The odds are heavily in the Horton 229's favour. All he has to do is keep booming and zooming. Napalm Priest can't run away from him. He's still trying to get those ground target kills though. Even though his ammunition loadout is no longer suitable for it. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. He ducks, he dodges, he dives, he weaves, and the Horton 229 makes a critical error. He overshoots, he leaves it too late to pull up, passes underneath the Sky Raider, and pulls up in front of his guns. And, well, Napalm Priest only had a couple of seconds to take the shot and make the hit. Otherwise, the Horton was going to be out of range and able to boom and zoom on him again, but thanks to the error that the Horton pilot committed by coming up in front of Napalm Priest's guns, he's able to saw his wing off, and win the match with an air-to-air -air kill in the Douglas Sky Raider. And the amount of awards the Napalm Priest took home from this match are nothing short of spectacular. He finished that game with 15 ground kills, one jet air kill. He got the Final Blow Award, the Best Squad Award, the Anti-Mech Award, the Terror of the Sky Award in a Sky Raider. <laughs> in a jet match. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, the balancer award because he was the lowest uh, battle rating aircraft in the match and the bulletproof award wow before we finish the video uh, a couple of amusing things to note about this match um, Napalm Priest's team only managed to shoot down three aircraft Napalm Priest got one 
and uh, one of his other jet pilots and got two. There were seven aircraft on the enemy team. <laughs> Five of them crashed, so... <laughs> I feel that a certain amount of credit should go to the enemy team for a Napalm Priest to victory in that match. But um, still, one hell of an accomplishment, flying a Sky Raider prop ground attack aircraft in a predominantly jet fighter game and not losing. <laughs> just, I wish I was that lucky. Also, one final thing to take note of, um, Napalm Priest has only just unlocked the Sky Raider. He doesn't have it fully upgraded. Check this out. Yeah, look at that. That's 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 the equipment that he's unlocked on this aircraft. He's gone predominantly for the weapons loadout, so he can, you know, bomb targets and do his job as a ground attack aircraft. He's got almost none of the flight upgrades. Um, <laughs> if you're watching this video, guys, and you were on the enemy team in that match, uh, hang your heads in shame. <laughs> And don't forget, he's predominantly an arcade pilot. He's very rarely flown realistic battles, although I suspect on the strength of this performance, he's probably got the taste for it. Um, <laughs> and we're going to see him flying more realistic battles in the future. So uh, that was Napalm Priest in the Douglas AD-2 Sky Raider in War Thunder. I hope you enjoyed watching that match half as much as I did, because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope you did too. As always, folks, take care. And I'll catch you next time. So now it's me again and uh, just a few words about this. I was amazed about what Jingles made out of this video. The commentary and uh, the grade of, yeah, just acknowledging here the skill, if you will. The upgrade ways, there you could see the 82 Sky Raider. Uh, had back then a battle rating of, if I remember, 7 or 6.7. So it uh, constantly flew against jets. It was also the time where I had only 41 million civil lines and the Golden Eagles were not from Gaichen, but from me. So this was my own investment. Um, so yeah, that was just something that I was very, very proud of. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't stop smiling for some days down the line. I was just running around like a smiling idiot. Um, Normally, I'm not, not smiling idiot, but uh, let's just forget about this. So aside from me constantly doing videos about War Thunder, this might be a little bit of a uh, video about what has happened since then and why I still make YouTube videos about War Thunder, where I'm coming from and where my inspirations comes from, what I'm proud of, uh, where I have uh, gone so far, and etc, etc. In the future, I have some more project plans with some other YouTubers, and maybe, maybe one day, I make hopefully a video together with Jingles. Not in a replay, but playing with the man himself. That is probably the one wish that I have and maybe maybe someday down the line this day will happen and that is personally my own wish now from the perspective of youtubers that just have begun that have barely 100 subscribers or what my channel size sounds intimidating uh, with eight and a half thousand subscribers I remember um, thinking of like those groups channel being sub 10,000 amazing uh, in terms of size and so one fun word to those guys never give up and always follow your heart stay true to yourself and don't betray yourself always say what you think but think about what you're thinking a bit longer before you make a video about it um, so yeah that is my pro tip for new youtubers is it worth to make a living off from war thunder I don't really think so because so many people are already doing it. But should you not try it? I absolutely think that you should try it to see if something, uh, if this is something for you. And uh, maybe, maybe some weeks, years down the line, you remember this video as an inspiration, like I remember so many other videos as an inspiration. And uh, yeah, I think this is now something completely else from uh, you know a daily's work on just simply one video um, or one vehicle, a review, first impressions, uh, a discussion about battle ratings, balance, map design, etc. No, 
this is the bigger picture, you know. The long way Gaijin has gotten with War Thunder. The result already is, is amazing. Think about the technology. Think about like air to air missiles. Think about uh, ATGMs, uh, the various different post penetration damage effects of the various different ammunition types, the various different uh, sounds and maps and all that stuff that we have in the game. There is already so much good in the game. It's just a little bit of fine tuning that this game needs to be the very best game that there is, especially in the free to play market. And that's it for me today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you think that the story was amazing. Um, please check out Chingo's videos um, if you haven't watched them and especially his channel if you uh, don't know him but you know me, which is something that uh, shouldn't be possible. But anyways, again, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Please give this video a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies, on the waves, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.